Welcome to Shamba Chef of Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape of Uganda! Uganda. Agi, are we in the right place? From this place is under construction. Yes, it is. <laughs> but it's going to be beautiful when it's done. I know. Wait, let's <laughs> see this place. Hey. Hey, it even has a bathroom in here. Wow. What? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, Pop, yes. you're most welcome. Thank you. How are you? Good. Fine, fine. You're immaculate? Yeah. I'm immaculate. Is this your house? My house is under construction. Wow. Yeah. Good work. Thank yeah. you. But can you show us the farm? Oh, come we go. go. We didn't get lost this time. <laughs> we are in Bugana village in Masaka and we're visiting Immaculate Naruwuje, clearly a very hard-working farmer. Immaculate started off with three quarters of an acre in 2001. She slowly expanded and now she's even constructing a new house from the proceeds of her farm. When we came here, there was totally nothing. Only bush, labs. We had of a problem of food. So I focused much on banana, cassava, and maize. After some time, I thought of income generating activities. Then I started coffee. But the, the little I earned, I was saving. Even if I get only 10,000, I spend, but I, I save some. But how did she do it? Smart Lady Immaculate. Through her savings, she's expanded her farm to four acres. And has intercropped bananas with coffee on three and a half acres. She also has five goats and a cow that's going to give birth in a month. Immaculate loves her cow, so let's first focus on that. Immaculate has one cow and gets 10 liters of milk per day from it. She says it's not bad, but she'd like to get more as there is a very good market for milk in the region. Only her cow is in calf, and for our expert from CKL Africa, Ronald Nwajira, she has to take some measures if she is to do things right. It looks to be in the calf, almost near to calf. In the calf. In the calf. In our local language, you can say the cow is very pregnant. Oh, okay. She's pregnant. <laughs> but in our language, you say it is in a cow. Okay. Only one month to calf. Only one month. Did you dry it? What is dry? What is dry? I don't know what is dry. So drying it is a condition mm -hmm. where you prepare your cow so that it can calve very well. So we normally do it two months before calving. You know a cow takes nine months uh -huh. yes, to deliver. Yes. So you are supposed to milk it for seven months. Then the two months are made to dry mm -hmm. the cow. We do it for because of the two reasons. Number one, when you are milking the cow, mm. it is taking a lot of nutrients. Okay. At the same time, it is feeding the feeder that is inside, mm -hmm. which means it's using a lot of nutrients. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to prepare our cow so that it can calve a healthy calf. Mm -hmm. At the same time, no, not have calving problems. Mm -hmm. That's number so one. So ideally, you are stopping the uh -huh. milk production. Now, number two, oh. you are doing it stop milk production. Because you have, you might find if you are supplementing, you are giving feeds with high phosphorus, which trigger milk. Knowledge is power. Is power. <laughs> <laughs> In drying, what type of feed should I give to the cow? When you are drying off, it should be better you feed them only on the natural pastures and you only give it a block, like Macric Plus. So this one will help to maintain the cow to remain in its body condition. It has some minerals of calcium, magnesium, which will help the cow to maintain so its calcium, body. So calcium, magnesium, um, salt? Iodine. Iodine. So the block you just The block, you just place it there, it leaks on its own. Oh, okay. That you don't limit it. That one you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
when the cow has calved, mm -hmm. it is very important because your target will have milk. more milk. Oh. Then you will have to feed in, supplement it with maclic super because it has phosphorus in it, which helps to trigger milk production. That is when it has calved. I, I give it in the powder form or I dye it? Dissolve you give water. it in the powder form or you mix it in the feeds. The quantity. And you are supposed to give your cow 200 mm -hmm. grams per day. So, after calving, you feed your cow 200 grams or 8 heaped tablespoons of Maclix super per day. When should I start milking after it has calved? You are not supposed to start milking. Simply because that milk is not yet real milk. It is colostrum. So, it is not yet pure milk that you are supposed to take. Yes. Oh. So, it is suppose you are supposed to leave your calf, first take that colostrum, mm. that will help it to develop immunity oh. that will be fighting other diseases that would attack it. You give it five days, then after five days, you can start milking your cow. Dry your cow when it is seven months pregnant. During this time, stop giving Maclick super and replace it with the mineral brick and feed it more on pasture. Drying off will ensure the cow has enough strength when giving birth and enough milk for the calf. The most problem I have here are the flies. Flies? I have so many flies and I don't know what to do. When you look at the condition that is in the cow shed, yes. automatically that one attributes the soul flies. Mm. Because first of all, once the cow did the droppings, mm. the urine, mm. so it is very difficult to clean. When you look at the concrete, mm. where the cow stays, where it is eating from, mm, yes. you look there are some potholes. Mm. You will not be able to clean your shed very well. Mm. Exactly. So if you want to eliminate them, make sure that all the floor of this cow shed is concrete and it is gently sloping in the such a that when you are scrubbing and cleaning mm. it, it has a collection yard where they are going. Mm. This will help you to ease your cleaning. Again, this will help you to collect the manure, the manure. that you can apply to your banana plantation and coffee that I've seen that is around. Okay. I look after this cow, but there are some things that are not well done because of the structure that I did. And if you tell them to me, in this structure, it is very difficult to, to implement. That's why I want to have another one. In future time, for God wishes, I'll plan for it. I'll save focusing that. 13 years ago, Immaculate started by planting 80 coffee trees. She now has 900. She harvested 1,500 kilograms last season. She's somehow happy with that, but knows she must do better because coffee is her biggest source of cash. With coffee, you get cash. Yes. When you want to buy land, you can buy. When you want to buy a cow, you can buy. Yes. And I love my coffee. My coffee is my everything. <laughs> <laughs> but she still has challenges in her plantation. So, we brought in our coffee expert, Andrew Magombe, from Cafe Africa to take a look at her garden. Hey, Immaculate. Oh, Andrew, hey. you are most welcome. Ah, this is Immaculate. Eh? Thank you for coming. <laughs> nice to meet yes, you. Agnes, yes, Agnes, you are nice most welcome. You. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Agnes, by the way, the excitement is that uh, she was my trainee about five years ago. Oh. And I'm happy to meet her on such a wonderful farm. I hope it is yours. It is mine. Ah. Oh, yes. Okay. Andrew is happy with his student. She has put into practice the principles of good coffee farming, and above all, she's inseparable from the tools that he has recommended. We've walked around the garden and we've seen a few things, but what are your real challenges? The pests we have, we have black tree borer, mm. and the diseases I have, the coffee, which disease. Mm. It affects me a lot. Mm. Secondary, climate change. At times we get prolonged drought and when it rains, it rains heavily, having hailstones that destroy our crops. Including the coffee? By then it was flowering, some of the flowers dropped, the bananas were beaten. Uh, for the climate change, some things that may be beyond 
our control now. Mm. For example, the hailstone yes. is a broad issue. It cuts across. Uh, now, the issue of pests and diseases, that one is really within our control, control. or your control. Mm. Do you have an idea of how to control those diseases? <laughs> the trick border and uh, the day border and, uh, and the cockroach disease? Why is she disease? laughing? <laughs> yeah, she has an idea. Because you have asked a question that I, I know. Mm. But? For example, mm. regular pruning and decircling haven't done it effectively. Why? Due to uh, human labor, I think. Okay. Because mm. I get casual laborers. Casual laborers, at times they come, at times they don't. And I've spent a lot of time in the construction of the other house. It took, it took me a lot of time and money. Mm. That is why you see this crop not being manageable, as I know it. Hmm? What about the wilt? For me, in my opinion, I think it can't be completely out of the farm. Are you sure? I, th I thought that. So it might be that you need to change from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, the wilt, first of all, affects robusta coffee. And robusta coffee, it affects the old varieties, the elites. Mm. The new clones are not affected. Now, when I see your garden, Fatin. these are the old varieties. Yeah, Fatin, yes. yeah, these are the old varieties, yes. not so? Yes. So yeah. these ones are susceptible and therefore, you can spread the wilt unknowingly by the tools you are yes. using. Mm. You work on one coffee tree, and as you go to work on another, it may be you, it may be your workers. You have told us you are using workers. That is the biggest mode of spread. You need to always ensure that the tools are disinfected before and after, after. use mm. with either spirit or jig. But now I'm seeing the problem is instilling that discipline in your <laughs> workers. I've been trying to train them, but the challenge is monitoring. Do you have one of them who can be the lead to supervise the others, maybe, that could do? I'll try that. We saw in your garden what we saw. The infected trees have been cut mm. and the stumps were still remaining there. Yes. Uh -huh. So you missed out, <laughs> <laughs> you missed out some things. <laughs> Ideally, yeah. we should have uprooted, uproot and burn not cut and burn. And when you are replacing, plant the new resistant varieties. On your farm, there are still some black of twig borer yes. infestations. We saw some host trees, which mm. are still on your farm. One, the musizi tree mm. is right there. That one harbors the pest, the twig borer, mm. and it is a source of reinfestation. So you need to cut off that. The musizi, mm. the avocado. You have tried avocado, but I still see avocado. <laughs> Eh? I'll cut them. Okay. <laughs> so the second is yeah. the coffee itself needs a lot of pruning, desaccharing to open up. So there's free light penetration and air saturation. So once you do that, those conditions don't allow the twig borer to, to shrive. The third one is, of course, when you get the infested twigs that are drying, mm. you need to cut them, to prune them, put them in a sack and burn them outside the, the farm. The farm and don't just throw them on the ground. So once you do those, really. You're good to go. You're good to go. This will be a model farm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'll do that. Immaculate is as good as her word. She starts by cutting off the black coffee twig boara hosts, the musizi and avocado trees. She will replace them by recommended trees, such as the mutuba or ficus in English, or the indigenous albizia. How long do you think this is going to take? He won't be done until after the break. We'll see you after, after the, break. the break. Welcome back to Kwaniriza Shamba Shepa, Uganda. <laughs> We are in Bugana village in Masaka and we're visiting Immaculate Narubu J, a very hard-working farmer. We have seen how she can make her cow more comfortable before calving and we advised her on how to get rid of pests and diseases in her coffee plantation. We are now going to see if she can get more bunches from her banana plantation and we will take care of her goats. <laughs> we have it. <laughs> Put 
Immaculate gets three to five bunches of bananas per month out of 150 trees from these three quarters of an acre. For our expert from Naro, Winfred Nabiteko, it's not nearly enough. It's only a quarter of what she could get per month. But Immaculate has challenges with pests and not enough manure to feed her plantation. I use cow manure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bring high power. Then I bring this fork top. Mm. I mix up the soil with the manure. That is good, but you said you apply a basin a year. Two per Two year. Two basins mm. per year. Per plant. Per plant. We ap you apply them at once. Yes. Since we don't have enough manure, let's apply one basin every season. Per season. Per stool. But the most important things for bananas, fertilization, whether it's manure, whether it's artificial, and the water. Because when you look at this plantation, especially after dry season, mm -hmm. you find that if you get a wind, they will all fall down. Because they are lacking water, they are lacking fertilizer, the insects will also be celebrating on them. So they are <laughs> unhealthy <laughs> because of that, yes. Do you have a problem with water? How have you been doing it with water? I fetch water from there down. <laughs> and I use a border board if it has taken long to, mm. to rain. That is money. Yeah, that is money, yes. Whoa. But we would have another alternative. Exactly. What is mm -hmm. it? Like if we, we were applying that manure maybe at the end of the season, mm. the manure is there, it can be like mulching. Mm. And mulching. Or we would have the trenches for water oh, harvesting, yes. mm. the water basins in the plantation. There are all sources of water. But first, don't forget to apply one basin of manure around your banana plant at the end of every season. So, do you have pests or diseases in our plantation? I do. Mm -hmm. I have banana weevils, mm -hmm. the nematodes. Mm -hmm. The type of bananas we have here, mm. we call nachitembe. They the are local. very susceptible, both to nematodes mm -hmm. and, and to the leaf. weevils compared to other varieties. Like? Like the Empologoma type, mm -hmm. mm, the Chisansa. They are not as susceptible as these local ones. Yes. How are you trying to control the weevils? After, after I've harvested, mm -hmm. like that one, I remove it. Mm -hmm. I cut, cut that stem. Mm -hmm. Then that, that one, I cut it into four pieces. Mm -hmm. Then after, I get a piece from that, cut it into two. I put it that after two to three days, I come and collect the weevils. It is good. Our expert likes Immaculate's weevil trapping because the cut-up banana attracts the pests, which you can then pick off easily. But it will not control the nematodes because I see mm. most of the problems are nematologic. How do we what control about? that one? Yes. <laughs> the nematological problems, we are going to start with the clean planting materials. Because they normally come with the planting material. Mm. Then the other alternative would be to do a rotation. Mm. You remove the bananas and we plant another crop for maybe three years. Hey. Especially the, the sweet potatoes and cassava. So the best practice is rehabilitation. You rehabilitate, you start with the clean planting material and you try to give it the nutrients it wants. Even if it has the nematodes, it will give you the good branches. Yeah, if we want to start with the clean planting materials yes. and you are not sure of the source, yes. when you get those planting materials, yes. clean them off all the roots and all the dry leaves, uh -huh. all the shells. Then you can either use a chemical, let they stay in a chemical for overnight, or you can use water, hot water at 50 degrees centigrade. You dip it there. So, you fill a basin with water at 52 to 55 degrees centigrade and dip your planting material for 20 minutes. That should get rid of the nematodes. Remember, there is no cure to nematodes. The best way to prevent it is to use clean planting materials and practice crop rotation with cassava and potatoes. If I grow properly all the, all the banana plants that I, that I have on my farm, I can't consume it all. So I direct the vat to commercial. Now if I, I get that target of two more cows, use my manure efficiently. By the time you come back, you will find some other changes. Very, very, and they will be positive. Immaculate has five gods and needs some advice on them. So 
Before our expert Ronald Nwajira of CKL Africa leaves us, we quote him to get some tips on housing and feeding. In the morning hours, they stay here. I feed them on just small, small things like the peelings, those grass. Then in the evening, I take them for grazing. Yeah, that's good, which means you feed your goats with local available pastures, the banana peelings from your bananas. That wouldn't be bad, but you also need to add some of the feeds, which have like protein, to help them, those young ones to grow, mm. and to help even these ones which are lactating, to have energy to manufacture more milk. So you can also add into your feeds, the feeds like coriandra. When you are feeding your goats, you need to provide this block because it will have to supply some of the mineral nutrients that the goats require. Like calcium, which will help in its bone formation. Phosphorus, like this lactating goat. So these mineral nutrients, they will be very important mm. for the goat. Yeah. When you look at the goat shed, it has a problem. It is roofed halfway. It means once it rains, some of these goats are going to be affected. Especially when I'm not around. When you are not around. What would you do if you're around and it's raining? I take them. Ah. <laughs> Two, when you look at the floor, it is not leveled. It means these goats, they stay on the ground. The down floor is always cold. In terms of cleaning, it, you'd have difficulty in cleaning, and which means you not have a very good hygiene. Therefore, when you are constructing, it's better that you raise your your goat shed at least one meter. That is, is about three. three feet from the ground. So that you put those timbers on top mm. so that these goats can sleep on top. When you are making that bedding, you are supposed to leave a space in between. When they put the first timber here, you are supposed to put your finger there. Then you place another timber. So we'll put, it should be like, like half an inch. The importance of leaving this is to allow the and goat dro droppings mm -hmm. and the urine. This will make you easy to go down and uh, clean. to clean and remove the manure and you put it into your plantation. So when you also look how it is covered, it is supposed to be having enclosed all over with timbers with some small spaces that would be allowing the aeration. But now you see the whole air can pass. Now mm. this one will cause effects of pneumonia and yet they will lower your production. I have an idea that each goat should have its own paddock yes. because they, what is that they do? They fight each other. <laughs> they fight each other. So what is the recommended spacing for each, each goat? goat? So it should be also about one meter, three feet. If you are really doing to do zero grazing, that one is very encouraging. It's what but I'm focusing you put, to. You put those paddocks at three feet. That will be enough space for your goat to do what? To feed. And it will not be fighting with the other. And you even train them that each goat knows its place where it is supposed to do what? To stay. feed from. Mm -hmm. Then from this one meter up. going up, mm. what how? happens? It should be around the seven feet. Because the goats are not so that long like the cows, so seven feet from there up, it's enough. From the floor? From the bedding. What about loafing? First of all, you can use the iron sheets. If you don't have the iron sheets, you can use your locally available materials. So after you have done your holding bomber, you see you need to put ladders. So when they are coming from the field, they just climb and go to yes. the house. When they are getting out, they just also move on those steps and go they down. Land down. OK, thank yeah. you. For Immaculate, it's all about housing and especially manure because she wants to fertilize her coffee and banana plantations properly and continue to grow. And the way I see it, she'll do just that. She loves her farm so much. I love farming as I love myself. I have a neighbor there. They live in Kampala. When they come, hey, mom, you are always smiling. You are always busy in your farm. The answer is, I love my farm. I work willingly, not being forced. When you work willingly, yeah, everything goes on well. Yes. So you don't put any other animals in the farm? Eh, 
I hope true. Which one? Mm. Ducks yeah. would be good. Ducks? No, and the boar for the goats. The boar <laughs> and the girl. Yeah. Let's take a picture. <laughs> Madam Immaculate. Thank you very much. Thank Dambashe. you so much for your time. Thank you. And Thank we you. wish you the best, only the best. I mean, yeah. you come back here. It will be. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and as for you, you, we will see you on the next Shamba Shepap Uganda. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.